Hello and welcome to episode 7 in our JRPG series. In this episode, we're going to work on having our target list now lead into us actually attacking the target. So we're going to work on getting our character running over to the uh, chosen target, swiping their sword and dealing damage to them. So join us right now as we get started. So to get our character attacking targets now, we're going to have to create a new event for our combat component. So we go to our combat component and we're going to create an event on our event graph. And this event is going to be called custom event called a attack command. Now the attack command is going to change slightly based on whether or not it's a ranged or a melee character. So we need to make that a boolean check on here. So we do is ranged character and hit compile. So the first thing we want to do when we give the attack command is we need to set the orbit of our camera to stop orbiting basically. So we're going to get the player character controller, get the view target that gets the current camera basically. and from there we do set orbit and I'll leave that as false. So after that, I want to put in the boolean is ranged attack character and put that into a branch. And for this, we're going to create two new custom events, one melee, one ranged. So I'm going to go over here and make a custom event and call that melee attack. And make another one for ranged attack. They're very similar. It's just a slight difference inside of them. So let's write about the melee attack. So on the melee attack here, we need to tell our AI here to move. Now at the moment, our characters do not have AI on them. So we'll cut to that in a moment. So first thing I want to do here, drag out and do AI move to. And drag that in. And the pawn here will be unit character. Drag that in there. And we also want to have a target actor. This will be the unit target. So this is the target that we're going to get from our target window. So in the variables, click on new variable, and this will be target uh, unit target. And the type for that will be a unit base. Oh on there. I'm going to drag that to the target actor. So that will run up to that target actor. And I'm going to put an acceptance radiance of 100 for this. Okay, so when it does start doing this, I want to tell it to remove the battle menu from the screen if it exists. Okay, so at the moment, the battle menu is going to be this action commands window. Drag this out, and we're going to do a right click convert to validate get. Plug that into the top of our AI move to, so it runs as soon as this is called. And if it's valid, we're going to tell it to remove from parent. And on success of this, so when it reaches the end here, we need to tell it to play a montage. And that montage is going to tell it to do the attack. So we're going to get the unit character out, get the mesh. And then from there, we're going to do a montage. Now go to on success. The montage itself will be a variable that can be changed per character. This is so we can use the same component for every single character, but change aspects of it. So with this montage to play, we're going to right click on this, promote to variable, and we'll call this one the attack montage. Like so. Um, <clears throat> okay, and then when it's completed the attack, we're going to tell it to move back to its original battle position. So on completed, AI move to, and target pawn is going to be unit character. The destination is going to be the battle position, and it's going to be break their tran the location there. And when it reaches the end, I want to reset its rotation back to the original starting point as well. So I'm going to do set uh, actor rotation. Whoops, I forgot. We have to drag out the character. Set actor rotation. So, and it goes on success. So, when it goes back to its spot, it will just turn back around to where we want it to be looking. Okay. 
and then we're gonna have a slight delay before it ends its turn. So a little delay for a couple of seconds. Change that to two. And then I'm gonna call the end turn function. Oh, wrong one. End turn. No, what do I call it? End unit turn. There you go. End unit turn. There you go. Okay. Um, and that'll call the end unit turn. And end unit turn here, we need to set up uh, quite simply. All it's going to do is going to call the turn ended event dispatcher. And then it's going to tell it to begin the battle again. So it starts the timer off again for its next attack. Okay. So that's the melee attack set up here. And that should work for our Greystone character. So let's just move this all along a little bit. Get a bit more space out of it. So I'll keep it as organized as possible because this will can get messy quick. Okay. Okay, so there is our melee attack. So let's set up the melee attack for Greystone. So let's go into our Greystone folder and find the attack animation we want to use. So we've got attack here, attack A fast, attack A medium, attack A slow. Let's see what these look like. Not too bad. Fast, slow. I kind of like the medium one. We've got attack B as well. Attack C. Attack A primary. Quite like that. I think I'll keep that one. So attack a primary already has a montage for us. I'm just going to rename this to save us uh, time finding it. I'm going to rename my attack montage here to raystone underscore primary attack. Okay. And I'm going to go back to the characters, go to the graystone unit and click on the combat component and over here i can choose what the attack montage he uses for his primary attack so here i'm looking for my greystone primary attack he's not ranged so i don't want to tick that and the rest of this i'm going to leave alone compile and save that okay so now we just need to send over the unit uh target this thing from our target window let's go over to the target window and set that up on our widget target window okay so this is adding all these sort of targets to the menu uh, we do need to bind the event to the target that's been chosen so uh, let's go to target window slot and create an event binding for this so event dispatcher and we call it target chosen and on the clicked event wherever it was uh, oh, I haven't made one yet that's fine uh, so to do the uh, clicked event for the button. Let's call that event dispatcher target chosen. Uh, target chosen will want and need to know what unit it was actually chosen by. So on the um, call target chosen, we want to change the input for this to include that unit. So this would be a uh, unit base. Uh, unit. Uh, unit base and this will be target and you can hit compile on this and it, it, sometimes you get an error like this on the event dispatchers just refresh it it fixes it for you the target here will be the unit like so. I'm going to go back to my target window when I'm populating this list so to go to populate target list and on here when we're creating the target window slot widget I'm going to drag out from there and do bind event the target chosen drag this in like so and from the this event here we're going to do create event and we're going to create a matching event so and we call this one target chosen now when the target has been chosen we need to tell its combat component of the unit character uh, that they are 
selecting that particular target. So we've got the unit over here. Drag this out, get unit. And then from there, I want to get the combat component and set the unit target to that. Target will be there. And then I'm going to basically take it to close this thing. So I'm going to click on return selected um, and call that. Okay. So it just animates it closed or it will remove it from anyway. So it's not a problem anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> that's the target being chosen there. Just fine. Um, we're going to hit compile and save this. Um, uh, invent graph, uh, populate. Oh, wait, whoops, yeah. Uh, this sometimes when you choose to create matching event, it tries to make it inside of the current uh, function. Just cut it from there, put it in event graph. There you go. We go to populate now. We choose that from the list here, target chosen. There you go. Okay, so we just need to make sure that our character, this, this target window has a unit set to it. So we go back to the unit battle HUD, go to the graph, and go to where we've got our pre construct up here. And we're going to drag in our target window. And we're going to set unit be the same as this unit here. That goes to the right character. Um, okay, so next we need to set up the AI part of our character to work here. So everything's AI controlled in this because you're not actually directly controlling them, you're giving them commands and then they're executing those commands. So very simply, all we're going to do is we're going to first of all add a nav mesh so they know where to go. Doesn't have to be a big one, just needs to cover the, the arena that they're in. So I'm just going to scale that. To cover that, and you should see you push P the green nav mesh. Good, um, and like so. Now, when you spawn a character in without a player controller, it actually already spawns in with the AI controller. We don't need to do anything special with the AI controller, we can leave it as is. We don't have to make our own one, don't have to make a behavior tree, don't have to make anything extra special for this. It should be able to move on its own just fine. So, let's test to see if this works. Hit the attack button, choose a target. Okay, so once we've done that, we need, need, now need to tell it to call the attack command on our combat component. So we're going to go back to our UI, which I've got here. So this calls the target chosen is setting it there. We actually need to call it. So we need to know actually whether or not we are calling an attack or magic or something else like that. So on here, I'm just going to move this along and I can actually call it from here. So this combat component here, just drag out and do attack command. And now this will do. Later on, we'll do um, more on this to make it allow to magic and technique and all that stuff. And then plug in or return. Okay, so we call the attack command, and then I'm going to go to the uh, back to the component here. So attack command, we need to just add in our melee and ranged attack on here. So it's going to do on true, we'll do the ranged attack. And on false, we'll do the melee attack. So I encountered one little bug and we're going to go into our unit base. And that's because we are spawning them in. We need to tell the AI controller to actually possess them when they spawn. So on the class defaults, go to auto possess AI and change it from placed in world to placed in world or spawned. Now if we're going to test this out. Okay, so now if I hit attack, choose a target, you'll go to a target, swing your sword. And come back 
and it will now go on to the next person's turn, which could be enemies, it could be the characters, and because the camera isn't changing, I'm going to assume it's meant to be an enemy's turn now, which we haven't actually set up the logic for yet, so nothing will happen at the moment. So, last thing we're going to do here is just improve the animation of our characters here so they actually animate. But the reason why he's just sliding on the floor like that is because the animation blueprint made by the Paragon team isn't suitable for our characters because we're using different character sets. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create our own animation blueprints for them. We're going to the characters, going to Greystone, and I'm going to just create a new animation blueprint in here. And we'll choose the Greystone skeleton. And we'll call this one Greystone Anim. And ours is going to be a very, very simple one. It doesn't have to be anything special because they're literally only doing a couple of things. So in here, we need to get hold of their speed value. So we can get the pawn owner and do valid. And plug this into here. And if it is valid, we want to get the velocity of this. So similar to how we did the spider, basically. And from there, vector length. And I'm going to promote that to a variable called speed. And we're going to plug that into its value there. And then we're going to create the blend space we want for this. So we go animation, blend space, 1D. We're going to choose the grayscale skeleton. And we'll do a move blend space. And very simply, I'm just going to make it do idle at the start. So just idle there. And also a uh, run uh, walk jog. Oh, I always forget what they call it. Jog, there you go. Um, jog forward, we'll put it here. So it goes between here to here. Okay, and we'll change the name of the horizontal axis here to speed. And we'll leave it at 0, 100. It doesn't really matter for this. Save and close that. Okay, so now if we go back to my animation blueprint and on the output pose here, we're going to drag in that animation. So move blend space. And we're going to drag in our speed value onto it. And we're going to put a slot on here too. So a default uh, slot will play the montage that we've got for the attacking. And you want to do the same sort of thing for each of the characters that you have. So let's just push play and see that. Oh, hang on. Whoops. Forgot to actually set it to Greystone. So if we go to the mesh, turn to change his animation blueprint to our new one. And now uh, test that out. Okay, so now when hitting pl play and attack target, he runs as expected. So the attack animation isn't working. I'm guessing that's because of the um, one we've got set up. Hey, it's using a different slot. So I'm just going to take to use that slot. Um, let's go back into here. Greystone. Go to this one. And open it up. And I'm going to take it to use, yep, yeah, use different slots. So this is using upper body slot. I'm going to take it to use just the default one. But for this type of game, it doesn't matter. Attack, attack, off he goes. Swing, and he runs back. And the next character we run. Okay. And the next character is going to be an enemy by guessing. Um, so the camera won't change it. So we'll worry about that later. So the changes we made on Greystone here are the exact same changes you want to make to all the other two characters as well. As well as you want to find their attack animations they want to use and make them montages and assign them to their combat components. That's all you have to do to change them. So just set up the animation blueprint exactly like we've done with Greystone and also set up the attack montages for them as well. You can pick any animation you like. I just chose this one. And that brings us to the end of episode seven. Thank you very much for watching. In the next part, we're going to add the reactions from the spider point of view. So when they get hit, they react to it, as well as some other effects we can put on the player characters as well. So when they attack, you actually see an effect as well with the animation. You can watch that episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. And I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all next time. Bye everyone.